Good evening. As President Trump settles in tonight for a weekend at Camp David, he's facing not only a pandemic, but a pressure cooker out in the country, a nation on edge. 64,000 dead, economic desperation, political tensions, and fiscal uncertainty as Congress considers its next step. All of those issues are now front and center, with governors in both parties grappling with how and when to reopen businesses. And the president, he hovers over everything, lashing out at his critics and receiving new updates this week from advisors about the political cost of the crisis. Joining me are four reporters covering these stories. Yamish Alcindor, White House correspondent for the PBS NewsHour. Weijia Zhang, White House correspondent for CBS News. Susan Page, Washington bureau chief for USA Today. And Philip Rucker, White House bureau chief for The Washington Post. Let's begin tonight with the president and the states. One revealing snapshot is Michigan, where Democratic Governor Gretchen Whitmer has faced intense protests for extending her emergency declaration to May 28th. Some protesters this week even carried weapons. President Trump tweeted on Friday that Whitmer should, quote, give a little and put out the fire and added, these are, quote, good people, but they are angry. But it's not just the president versus Democrats. In Maryland, Republican Governor Larry Hogan told me in a Washington Post Live interview on Thursday that he fears the federal government could try to seize the 500,000 coronavirus tests his state secured last week from South Korea, and he treated them like treasure when they landed at BWI Airport. It was like Fort Knox to us because it's going to save the lives of thousands of our citizens. The National Guard protecting tests. Is the National Guard in Maryland still protecting those tests? They are. The National Guard and the state police are both guarding these tests at an undisclosed location. So amid the scattered reopening plans and the protests and the alarm about testing, federal health officials have warned governors to not go too far too fast. They know their states. The mayors know their cities. So you want to give them a little wiggle room. But my recommendation is, you know, don't wiggle too much. Weijia, welcome to Washington Week. And Dr. Fauci just said, don't wiggle too much talking to governors. When you're covering the governors out there in the states, what kind of challenges are they facing when it comes to testing as all of these states try to reopen? You know, governors for so long have essentially been begging the administration to help them get supplies so they can complete these tests. You know, President Trump likes to talk a lot about the testing capacity across the nation, and that's one thing. That is the potential to test Americans. But governors say they need the goods to do it. And despite the president and the administration insisting that they are helping, we're just not seeing that play out on the ground. Uh, in fact, just this week, President Trump rolled out a national testing blueprint um, in an effort under mounting pressure to show that he is taking leadership. But when you really look at this blueprint, Bob, it just shows a list of suggestions for the state. So the big question still remains why he is not using his full power to procure Cure these uh, pieces of equipment that are so critical for testing. And I think it's not just the states, but, you know, just today we're talking mm -hmm. about the Capitol physician saying he doesn't have enough tests for lawmakers returning on Monday. And I think that's a really telling story of where we are with testing and how sorely we are still lacking. And Phil, you hear it from every governor, Governor Hogan, Governor Pritzker, they say they may have tests, but they don't have the swabs. So help me understand the president's confrontation with Governor Whitmer, with other governors. What behind the scenes is driving that strategy and those attacks? Well, a big part of it, Bob, is, is simple politics. We're in a campaign year, of course. The president's going to be standing for re-election in November, a short time away. And he's trying to shirk responsibility, shirk blame uh, for any of the failings in the United States response to the coronavirus pandemic. Central, as we just pointed out, uh, is the testing failures, the, the struggle to get mass testing around this country. The governors don't have the swabs that they need. They don't have the trained technicians that they need to run those fancy new Abbott machines. Uh, and they're not able to perform tests at the capacity uh, in order to feel safe reopening their states. They want help from Washington, and they're not getting it because the White House, the president, uh, have determined that this should be a state issue. They don't want to have responsibility for a national testing strategy. They want to have the states executed on their own. 
Yamish, are we seeing a red state, blue state divide? You look at some of these states like Texas and Georgia with Republican governors moving swiftly to reopen, Democratic governors like Governor Whitmer facing protests. We are. We're seeing um, what is really the consequences of a more polarized America as a whole. And now we're seeing these different policies play out state by state. I should note that what Weijia and Phil are talking about tonight are really the, the beginnings of how this crisis began, which is that the, from, the, from the very beginning, we saw state and local leaders, governors, begging for some sort of real federal policy on testing, real federal policy on how to handle this coronavirus outbreak. And they have continued to say that. They continue to say that they want more guidance from the White House, that they want more help from the White House. So the idea that you can reopen the government without um, having a large testing strategy, governors say, is just something that can't happen. And that includes Repu some Republican governors, like Larry Hogan, who we saw literally smuggle in um, tests from South Korea because he said that he needed to get that 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 equipment for his state. So what you're seeing is really the the fruits of not only, as, as I said, a polarized America, but also an America where states are having to fend for themselves because the White House has said that they don't want to be part of this national stra testing strategy because they say it's a local issue. Of course, we have to, I think, continue to talk about the fact that the president said more than a month ago now that anyone who wants a test could get a test, and that wasn't true then, and it's not true now.